I started a new stream, so. Give everybody a minute to get in. Oh, really? Okay, so we got some people in here. Can you hear me, everybody? There we go. There's some people. So... Uh, we had a little technical difficulties and I had to start a new stream. Uh, this is my first time doing a YouTube live, so you have to bear with me there. Um, we are going to be starting my peppers today. Um, you can probably hear my dogs barking in the background. And if you have a question, drop it in the chat. The audio on the stream is delayed 10 to 15 seconds potentially, so it may take a few minutes for me to answer your question. All right. So the peppers I went over in a previous video, um, I'll go over them briefly again. So I do most of the traditional peppers, uh, bell pepper and um, jalapenos, but I picked up a couple more that I don't think that was in a previous video. So I'm doing the shishitos after I visited Jess last year. Uh, she made some shishito peppers blistered with butter and salt for me. That was really great. And then I have the Proven Winners, Fire Away, Hot and Heavy, King of the North, which is what one of my subscribers actually mentioned I should try uh, when I went over my pepper video. It was, It's a bell pepper. Um, this is it right here. Then we have a Bridge to Paris pepper, which is a pepper I picked up uh, not too long ago from a Hudson Valley Seed Company. We got the California Wonder Bell, which is a typical bell pepper. Uh, the Keystone Resistant Giant, which is another general bell pepper. Uh, I was on Baker Creek a couple weeks ago and I picked up some peppers I had never seen before. One of them's Lesia, uh, which says it's believed to be the sweetest of all peppers with the thickest flesh. Uh, so that'll be a really interesting snacking pepper. Blot, which looks similar to a bell pepper, but quite more elongated. Pippin's Golden Honey, which is, says it's a beloved heirloom of Philadelphia, African-American community of the early 1900s. And then we have Tam Jalapeno, which is a bigger jalapeno that I really like. Craig's Grande Jalapeno. Not a Pino, which is a not spicy jalapeno, so it's good to add to recipes uh, to increase the jalapeno flavor without the spice. And Corbachi, which is a really nice sweet snacking pepper that I like to pickle. So I went ahead and prepared all my seed starting mix this morning. Uh, we got a few people commenting in here. Uh, basically, if you don't know what my seed starting mix, I mix it myself, and this is a combination of uh, cocoa core, which I picked up online, perlite, and vermiculite in the ratios of 2 1 1, two parts uh, cocoa core to one part perlite and vermiculite. And this I mixed up without any additional items except the mosquito bits, which I've showed on my channel before, which I like to add for fungus gnat control. It controls the larva specifically. Um, and so we're just going to get started because I've already got all the labels here. Uh, the labels that I use, if you're just interested, is this Rapid Clip. They're a really heavy-duty plastic label. 
and then I just write on it with this marker called, it says garden marker for outdoor use because if you stick regular permanent marker outside on some items, um, it can fade in the sun really quickly. So I'm just going to get these planted and if you have any questions, I'll be watching here on the side. I'm going to put two peppers. Some of these seeds that I have are quite old, so I'm going to put two seeds per um, container. This is Corbachi. And last year I put two per container. I ended up having to trim a lot out, but that's what we would do if we want to make sure we get sufficient germination. These are these are jalapeno seeds, so just be careful, don't touch your eyes, because jalapeno seeds are hot. Typically, you'll want to pre-moisten your potting soil. This potting soil I mixed up a while back and it's kind of dry, um, but I'm going to soak it in some water after I finish planting these and bottom water it. That way the seeds don't get dislodged. And I don't make a ton of tags and so I do one at the front and then whatever I plant behind that from left to right is the same variety just to save on tags. This is the golden honey pepper. Baker Creek has really great glue on their seed packets but it can be a little difficult to open sometimes. Yeah, Hannah, I had a little streaming area era, so I'm using, I'm not using YouTube Studio, which is what creators use. I'm using a third-party app, uh, and it wouldn't let me start that prior stream I had started from there. So I had to start another one, and I'll go back and delete that one at the end here. Um, typical first-time issues for software I've never used. Okay, when do you move your plants to the garden? Um, so I, in Southwest Ohio, everyone around here will tell you, and a lot of people in other zones, even though it's not necessarily true, is to don't plant anything before Mother's Day. So after the first week of May or so. Um, the first couple years I started gardening, our uh, last frost was, the end of May, April, April, I think the earliest I planted was April 23rd. Uh, I don't do that anymore since uh, two years ago in 2020, we had a really late, really severe frost uh, of, I don't remember, I think it got down to the 23 or so, which is not ideal. I had already actually planted my peppers outside. And so I covered everything up and I actually had planted my tomatoes and everything else and everything survived. I didn't have any issues, but since then I shoot um, for my seed starting dates to do May 1st. Um, that way I'll have a week early if I want to get them in the ground a little early. And then if I want to, if we're still having bad weather, I can wait an additional week uh, and get them out then. So it's just kind of iffy around here which time you choose, but you can always Google your last frost date. And I would just kind of 
be careful about that date and watch it because our last frost date does say the average around here is the end of April, but you can't trust it. And then if you put stuff out in the out in the garden, then you might risk losing some things. So peppers, I start typically 10 weeks before May 1st. So I just use generally May 1st as a good guideline because it's easy to count back weeks. Uh, tipper, peppers typically need 8 to 12 weeks to do get good enough so you can put them out in the garden. But um, I do 10 weeks and I've had really good success with that. So a lot of people also tell you to wait to put peppers out until it's really warm. And so some people may think I'm starting these too early. I have not found that my peppers have struggled from putting them out before we had really warm nights. And so the weather really fluctuates in Ohio here um, in the spring. We have really cold nights and then warmer evenings. Um, but I have found I haven't had any issues with stunting or anything. So if you've discovered that, of course, put your peppers out later, but I've never had that issue. Okay, Laura asked about cucumber beetles. Uh, I am not actually sure what cucumber beetles are. I've never had any issues with my cucumbers or pests related to my cucumbers. So I'm not sure. Um, if you want an organic method, I spray if I have to. I don't like to spray any of my vegetables, and I don't typically have any issues with my vegetables enough that I have to spray anything. Um, but I would use an organic um, chrysanthemum spray. Can't think of the name of it. I can't think of the name of it off my head. But um, there's an organic spray that takes care of a lot of pests, and it's made from a chrysanthemum flower, I believe. So I typically just do a whole flat of of uh, pepper seeds, and so I just have a combination here. And then um, I plant all of mine in my earth boxes, which I've showed on my channel before. I've got some issues with them um, as far as the water solution. I've got to order some more automatic watering devices from them because they have issues with them. I haven't mentioned it in a video because I just started having this issue this year. They tend to get out in the sun and then they become brittle, the connection, and when you want to remove them and bring them in for winter, uh, they like to break off and then you can't use them again. So I've had them for about three years. So that's a pretty good run for something that gets beat by the heat that long. All right. Yeah, I had some issues with streaming, Christina. So how many days do I take to harden off my peppers before planting outside? So one thing about my property is I don't have a lot of shade. Um, everything is so hot everywhere except in our front that is eastern facing. And so I bring all of my stuff out at the same time. And I put it um, on our front porch. And so it will harden off out there for uh, at least a week. I am probably pretty less careful about it than a lot of people are. Um, and then when I put them outside, I rarely bring them back inside or I'll stick them in the garage if it's going to be really cold. Um, so I don't want to bring them up and down the basement, which I do all my seeds starting in the basement. So uh, if they get put outside to harden off, they stay there until they get put in the basement if the night's too cold. So I do I plant peppers in a green stalk? Um, the only thing I planted in a green stalk last year were strawberries, uh, some Swiss chard, and some marigolds. And I didn't have great luck with the green stalk last year. 
and I think it's primarily because it was on our patio, which I've complained about how hot it is on our patio, uh, and then I just had issues keeping water to it. So I'm going to resolve some of those issues this year and try and figure out a better way to grow in the green stalk and keep it sufficiently moist, whether that's being whether that's adding it to drip, um, I'm thinking about a solution for that, or some other method to keep it partially shaded so I can grow stuff in it a little more successfully and it doesn't dry out so bad. Yeah, so the hot peppers, I have really good luck with the peppers in my earth boxes. I've only grown peppers in my earth boxes since I started gardening, and I put four peppers in each earth box and they get massive. Uh, my favorite pepper, I really just love bell peppers, and so I, as you see, I planted 12, so I've got three, four rows here, um, three rows of four, and so I have 12, three different varieties of a bell pepper variety, and so I use those, and I cut them up and freeze them for winter. All right, so we're done with the peppers. Um, if you watch my seed starting video of the geraniums, you know I don't put soil over any of my seeds. I use straight vermiculite, and so this is, I picked it up, if you're from Ohio or the Midwest, uh, you can get at a big box store called Menards, and so I just cover the seeds gently with vermiculite, and then vermiculite helps hold in moisture enough to germinate, and then you're all good to go from there. And it's also easier uh, to determine when the soil is adequately moist for planting or for when you need to water again. So I typically bottom water, so I use all of my bootstrap farmer supplies, which I've mentioned before, which are really great. I'm actually going to be using some different ones here. I'm going to show you briefly that I picked up, uh, but I really like the bootstrap farmer stuff because I have the um, trays underneath this fit perfectly and that I can just fill up with water and then... Um, water them from there. So I'm going to take these over here and we'll get moving on to the annuals. Yeah, so I do have a grow light. I did a video last winter on my grow light uh, and the station that I have, and I'll show that in another video coming up. Um, I essentially bought one of those tiered shelves from Sam's Club. You know, I really like the Sam's Club and Costco to buy gardening supplies, so I bought the tiered shelf from Sam's Club because it comes with a plastic sheet you can put on the shelving, the wire shelving, and then I bought shop lights from Sam's Club as well. And so all of my lighting came from uh, Sam's Club basically, and so. I don't have grow lights, and I don't think you need grow lights to start seeds indoors. If you're not wanting to get anything to flower, you may have issues if you need a more red-like light. But the Sam's Club shop lights, um, I forget who they're made by. They're made by Honeywell, and they're about 5000 I have a box right here because I picked up more um, a couple weeks ago because I added two lights to each shelf. Previously, I've had one. And I've used one all these years on all the shelves, but I'm going to be starting more annual flower seeds this year, and that way I can stack more seeds together, or seed trays together. I bought an extra light so we'd have a little more lumens there. So uh, the lights, I don't adjust the lights either. There's a question here from Donna. Uh, the lights are five... 5,000 lumens is what the box says. Let me grab the box right quick. So this is it. If you have a Sam's Club membership, I actually looked online and Sam said they didn't have them in stock, uh, but I went and they had them and they're linkable. So they plug up to an outlet and you can just plug one into another and you can connect up to 10. So my shelf has six, um, trays I think or six levels and I hang it on the bottom of each shelf and so I use 10 total and so 10 are hooked up to my shelving unit right now okay Christina the purple flowers are petunias uh, they're supertunias from proven winners and so actually 
right now what I'm about to be planting are some petunias. Super petunias from Proven Winners are from tissue culture, so you can't buy seeds for them. Uh, and if you're going to plant petunias, I really recommend the super petunias. Um, they do just absolutely great if you fertilize them regularly. So super petunias... There's two different varieties, or there may be three different varieties now. There's the regular one, and then there's a Vista, which are really vigorous, which is the pink one I planted last year uh, called Bubblegum. The purple one that I always plant is called Bordeaux. Uh, in those on my porch, I'm not going to be planting Supertunias in those containers this year. I've had some issues the past two years uh, with whitefly or some other bug starting later in summer because I do have the ferns that hang above it and I think the foliage stays too wet because it gets watered twice a day to just keep them sufficiently moist. Um, and so I'm not doing supertunias up there this year and I will probably purchase supertunias. I just don't know where I'm going to put them yet. But today what I'm going to be starting is wave petunias, which I have grown wave petunias before. I've never grown them in a container, uh, and I didn't have good luck for the, with them in the landscape, but you know I have really heavy clay soil. So these seeds are from Park Seed, and I actually purchased these seeds uh, several, several years ago, so I'm not sure if they will germinate really well for me at all. They're pelleted, and this variety is called Petunia Wave Misty Lilac. So I've heard some people say that uh, their wave petunias didn't wave. And so that was has been my experience for them. But I want to tuck some in some flower beds around the house this year. And so uh, I'm going to try them this year. I need to use up these seeds that I bought several years ago. So we're going to do that. So this tray, yes. Yeah, so... Um, Jenny, this is the gardener supply tray that you might see Laura use on Garden Answer. And they were on sale a while back, and I picked up some because I wanted to try them out. And I, because when I got seed starting, I started using trays from Lowe's that were also self watering, and that I had a lot of success that way. So if you have issues seed starting, I do recommend the self watering trays uh, because they do a really good job of keeping your plants moist for you especially if you need to go out of town uh, on spring break or something. That's a really good option for you. But I'm a little disappointed in them in that they're smaller. And so the bootstrap trays you just saw up here cover this whole area. And so I didn't realize that they're a little smaller. And so I'm afraid I might have to pot up some of this stuff before we even get to spring, which I don't like to do, uh, mainly because it's a mess. And so... Uh, that's my only complaint with them. They seem a little small, but they are really sturdy, very similar to the bootstrap trays, um, and so they're not going to break on you and they'll be used multiple years in a row. So I really like them, and they come with their own little um, cover here to keep in humidity. So these petunia plant, uh, seeds need light to germinate, it says. So I'm going to cover them very lightly with vermiculite uh, but these are also pelleted which I don't know if you've seen pelleted seeds before but they have a little coating of clay is basically what it is and it allows you to handle them easier because if you've tried to plant any other petunia seeds they're like dust the size of them almost so I have three packs of each, and so I got these from Park Seed several years ago, and they're kind of expensive. Um, not terribly, but they were like six or seven dollars for ten seeds, and so it's kind of inexpensive. But wave petunias are much cheaper than super petunias too, if you want to try those out. I've seen beautiful containers containers with wave petunias in them. I've just never had good success with them, so so the garden bit bench under the willow uh jamie that was a facebook marketplace find someone was moving out of their home locally and posted on facebook marketplace and i immediately was like i've got to go get this i paid a hundred dollars for that bench uh, and that bench is probably it's by a really expensive um a company that produces really expensive concrete benches and it was probably like 
over a thousand dollars new and it was in perfect condition it was super heavy and difficult to move but i found it on facebook marketplace for a hundred dollars so it was definitely a steal um, and that was two years ago i think so facebook marketplace uh, if you're local i'm gonna regret saying this but i constantly check facebook marketplace in the spring uh, for items like that that just show up people are moving or getting rid of and i don't know why the person was not taking it with them i mean it was heavy and she probably didn't want to deal with it but i also don't know why she wasn't leaving it for the new owners because it was kind of part of the landscape but i was super happy to get it so these uh seed starting trays you basically fill them with water on the bottom and these are by gardener supply uh, they come with this little plastic stand on the bottom and then there's a mat that lays in the tray like this with this little lip and then when you fill it up with water uh, the water absorbs through the mat and covers all of the uh, the whole mat gets wet and then covers your whole seeds so if these type of seed starting trays do work really well I've used them for years uh, I haven't used them the past couple years just because I moved to the bootstrap farmer supplies but uh, and the ones I had from Lowe's were really cheap so but these should do really well for you and you can now, I believe Laura said, purchase extra mats. So the mats will get a little um, rough looking over the years and you can purchase additional ones. All right, so I've got more petunias. So this is a tray of 24 that I just planted of the misty lilac and that's a um, white pinkish color this is wave purple so it's just generally a purple color similar it's not like the bordeaux petunias that you would have seen uh, in my containers out front it's more of a solid purple instead of looking like those super junior bordeaux So I'm just spreading. I'm not putting, some of them I'm putting two in because I have a total of 30 seeds and I really want to use them up so I'll not have more seeds sitting around next year. I'm putting two in some of the spaces and then not in others, one in just other ones. And these can take seven to 21 days to germinate. So I've never grown these from seed either. Uh, and I'm not sure if the company that creates wave petunias grow them from seed. They must if petunia seeds are available from them. But all of the proven winter ones are tissue culture. And so you can't purchase seeds. And that's why they're so vigorous. Uh, they've been bred that way. So I ended up purchasing four of these gardener supplies and I'm going to have gardener supply uh, trays and I'm going to have one left over that I'm not going to use but I'll probably use for some cut flowers in a different video um, coming up. Hey Roxana, these are wave petunias. Roxana has been starting a bunch of stuff and I mentioned in one of my last videos she's one of the reasons I'm getting so nervous and needed to get some things started because she's already started a ton of stuff and she's in zone five in Indiana so if you're in Indiana be sure to follow her. Um, she does some really beautiful she's a photographer by trade um, and so that's why one of the reasons I did photography as a hobby but she has some beautiful footage uh, of just around the garden, so y'all need to check her out if you're not watching Roxana. I don't know if I answered your question, Roxana, but these are wave petunias. I started one called Purple and then Misty Lilac, and the seeds are a couple years old, so I'm not sure if we'll have much luck out of them, but we're going to give them a try. All right, uh, last tray. And then I have a small tray to do. So I'm getting these started kind of late, I think. Yeah, so 
Roxana started geraniums because of me. I've been, been drawing, I've been growing geraniums for, this may be my fourth year. It's probably my third, but I think it might be my fourth. Um, and I started them and had really great success. And geraniums are just so expensive. A lot of people don't like them, but I really like them. And I don't have a big issue deadheading the ones that I grow. They, It's very minimal the amount you have to deadhead them. So I'm, these, this tray I'm starting are violas. Uh, one is called the Tiger Eye Mix, and I'm doing another one called Brush Strokes. And so Tiger Eye, I'm going to do 12 of each. I started violas a few years ago. And then as an early gardener, I saw that they could spread really badly. And then not knowing at the time, I, I didn't even plant them because I was concerned before I knew any better that they might take over my garden. And I didn't want anything invasive like that in my garden. So uh, that was my fault. And I should have got invested in violas a little earlier. So this is the Tiger Eye Mix. Yeah, so C. Jones, I do use vermiculite on all of my seeds, uh, and I've done that for the past three years, I think. Uh, I can't remember what I was planting, and one of them said to add vermiculite to the top of it. And so I saw it worked really, really well. So I started vermiculite, or putting vermiculite on all of my seeds. And these can be direct sowed outside in early spring, but there's not a whole lot I direct sow because I mulch really heavily. I'm going to be direct sowing some poppies here coming up soon before it gets too late to do that. So I just put a few seeds in each one. I'm going to keep a couple left over that I might spread along the ground out there. So that's the tiger eye mix and it's a pretty um, yellow and orange color. Looks really beautiful. So more people starting geraniums. That's good. Yeah, they're super simple, and I don't. People just don't think about starting them. Uh, you can also propagate them really easily. I have never tried that, but that might be something I try this year. They propagate super easily, apparently. And a lot of people, as you know, I just complained about dahlias on a separate video. So a lot of people will dig up their geraniums. And you can apparently hang them upside down in your basement or put them in a paper bag and keep the roots misted every month or so during winter and replant them in the spring. Um, I have never tried that, so I don't know how well it works, but uh, that might be an experiment to do this coming winter. Because uh, if I can just put them in a paper bag, I would be a little more dedicated not having to dig through vermiculite to check them than I am for the... Um, the dahlias. So the Osmocote is the plant food, the slow release plant food that I use. Um, the vermiculite just came in a bag from Menards is where I pick it up at. Osmocote I add to all of my flower seeds and so I added it previously along with the mosquito bits. Um, when I was mixing the seed mix this morning. I don't add Osmocote to my vegetable starch just because I go, I try and do all organic with my vegetables, but I don't mind adding it to my annuals because typically they're going to be going in containers for the most part, but if they're not, um, I don't have an issue with just using it here and there. So, Roxana said she's going to be doing her dahlias in containers exclusively this year. I have grown dahlias in a container one year, I think. Um, they did okay. I think that, that was the same year that I had all of those rot in the landscape. And so, um, I've just started putting them in raised beds since that time. I think if I continue to amend my soil and adding lots of mulch over time, one day I'll get to the point where I can add um, dahlias to my landscaping beds, but that's not going to be anytime soon, certainly. 
I have not started hellebores from seed. So hellebores can be grown from seed, um, but they take forever to get started. And that's one of the reason hellebores are so expensive is because they grow really slowly. So if you start a hellebore from seed, you kind of have to baby it for a while. And then you could take, it could take several years to actually get a bloom from that plant just because they take so long. But I have actually purchased hellebores. I think I put that in a video recently. Uh, they're really hard to get to if you want to order them. Um, and wholesale anyway, I'm ordering some stuff wholesale, but it takes a while. They're sold out unless you get them like a year in advance. So my hellebores won't come until next year. So that's just something I got to deal with. Hey Mags Love, you have 300 dahlias? That sounds like a nightmare. <laughs> so these seeds are butterfly pea seeds and these come from Brad from Garden Evolution. He has a YouTube channel uh, and he also has an Instagram and he, we we're doing kind of a grow along I think is what he wanted to do. So butterfly peas, I've seen different things online. I went to Baker Creek's website earlier to see when I should start them, even though Brad said we needed to start them now. Baker Creek said around eight weeks, um, but I found another website that said 12 weeks, so these will definitely need to be potted up from these trays, probably. Uh, we'll see. I've never grown them before, but they're supposed to have a really beautiful color bloom on them, and it's something now that I have the fence that I could put along the fence to trellis on. So Roxana asked if I've started dahlias from seed. Yes, uh, actually the, f not last year, but the year, but well, last year I started dahlias from seed and the year before I started dahlias from seed. Um, I found that I didn't have great luck with, I mean, they grew really well. And in fact, some of the biggest tubers that I had come from the dahlias I started from seed, but course you don't know what you're going to get so they're mixed and open pollinated and sometimes you can get really good results from a seed and other times I've found that the flowers just don't hold very long um, the ones that are sold as tubers obviously have been bred because they keep their flowers a really long time and so that's the only um, issue that I've had with them is some some that come up they just they're not good for cut flowers what you would want a dahlia for because the petals just fall off the blooms within like a day or two so that may just be the experience with the open pollinated seed that I had but that's the issue I had there yeah so these boot trays I've had these for a couple years too so if you need to start stuff from seed and you want to do it cheaply these came from Ikea so someone recognized that and I use them to put big containers on in my seed starting room uh, next door and so it's a great uh, thing to hold water. Yeah, so she uses the boot trays under her pots. So Andrea asked the peppers if I would need to pot them up. So that's one of the reasons I love the bootstrap farmer trays is because I don't pot up, I don't need to pot up my peppers um, at all when they go out in spring. They grow, I grow everything in the basement so it stays a little cooler down here so stuff tends to grow a little slower and so that's one of the reasons I might start stuff a little earlier than some people might. Um, the peppers specifically tend to grow a little slower but last year I had my best pepper year and they were really great but they don't get big enough when I start them now that they need to be potted up. I think when I did my geranium seed starting video that I mentioned I didn't have to pot up my geraniums from that. Uh, and I completely forgot about the video I did last year potting up geraniums. So um, you, I didn't have to do so, but because I wanted to put some more growth on them before they went out, um, I potted them up early in March, I believe it was. Does anyone have any more questions? I've gone through all the seeds I had planned tonight. Uh, one thing I did today, and I don't know if y'all do this, but I went through and marked and organized my seeds by when they needed to be started roughly. And so I just put a sticky note on the front like these are 
six sweet seeds and they contain a lot of herbs, basils and stuff, uh, and greens like kale. And so March 15th is when I would get those started. April 1st for my cucumbers and stuff that don't need to be in a container very long. And then I have my tomatoes and stuff on March 1st. So that's just another couple weeks. And it's not technically March 1st or April 1st. It's just usually the weekend is when I do all my seed starting. So the closest weekend to those dates. And these are all my vegetable seeds. And I did and I did the same thing to all of my flowers. And so I'll be starting more basils. And I'm actually starting some coleus from seed that I ordered uh, last year. I actually think I did that because of Roxana's channel. I saw that she grew coleus from seed and had really good success. And so coleus is something that I really like, but it's hard to find locally for some reason. You can get it in early spring, and then the garden centers just stop carrying it. Uh, so that's why I'm ordering more, or I'm planting coleus from seed this year. Yeah, so Roxana likes to plant up her two and a half inch cells. Um, so I am not that committed. That's one of the reasons I grow in these is because I can typically seed start in them and then they can be in there long enough that I can take them outside. Um, by the time these are done, I do keep them really well watered. So there'll be roots coming out of the bottom of it and typically everything I grow, but they do do really well that way. So Jamie asked if my black lace elderberry is budding. Um, I have not been out there to check. Uh, we have had a lot of snow, a lot of ice, and then we had a lot of rain. And so my backyard's a mess. I did walk around the other day just to check on stuff, but I didn't check on my black lace elderberry. It might be a little early. There's not a whole lot that's starting to bud yet. Um, and I'm really concerned about that black lace elderberry because it struggled really bad last year. And so I'm afraid there's it's holding water really bad and it might not live. But if it does, I might end up digging up and moving it uh, next to the fence on where there's a lot of planting area space that I talked about in my last video. I've decided what I'm going to do in that planting space um, and I'm going to turn it into a cottage garden. I love cottage gardens. That's not something that I've focused on a lot in my garden yet. I just like, every time I see a cottage garden, I want it, but I'm not great with spacing, honestly, and so I have a hard time picking out stuff to put uh, close enough together, and I tend to want to repeat stuff, and so it's going to be an opportunity for me this year to grow and like design some stuff, but I've already got some plants picked out. I just haven't pulled the trigger on ordering them yet. So Roxana asks, Sol and Margaritas asks if I have any lilacs. Um, before I significantly started gardening, one of the first things I put in my garden was three lilacs. And they were just generic varieties that got way too big for their space. I planted them and then had to move them. And then when I moved them, um, I had an issue with our late frost here killing the buds and so they were in the ground almost three years and I never got a single bud or a flower off any of them because the late freezes ruined them. So that's why I plant a lot of stuff that blooms again in, um, on new growth and so I have a dwarf bloomerang lilac I planted last year from great garden plants and it's just a tiny little thing and I hope the rabbits didn't eat it to the ground. I was out there looking for it the other day and I couldn't find it so it may not have survived. We'll have to see. So Donna says she hasn't had great luck starting coleus from seed. Uh, I have never started coleus from seed, so I will be doing it the same way I did these others. Uh, Roxana from Soil and Margaritas had really great success. So I don't know if she's done a seed starting video on coleus, but I will probably check it out to see if there's anything special I need to do. Uh, I don't think that the seed starting packets have anything special on them about the coleus. I've got a couple of varieties. One's called Sunset Wizard. It's supposed to be a really beautiful multicolored. Um, one called Palisandra. 
It says for early pot culture, sow in December, but it says you can sow January 30th to March 15th. And so that's why I decided March 1st I was going to plant it. And it says it germinates in 7 to 10 days at 70 degrees. So I might put these on a seed starting mat just so they have sufficient heat in my basement. So Brad from Garden Evolution, Jasmine, sent me seeds for the butterfly peas, and he sent me some sunflowers that he picked up um, that were really beautiful, but I direct sow all my sunflowers. I don't get them started early. So Roxana asked what I'm starting in the next two weeks. Um, that will be all of my tomato seeds, and then... So that's my March 1st packet. So I went through today and did all this. So it'll be all of my tomato seeds. I'm going to start lemongrass. I grew it a couple years ago. Roxana did a video starting that. I think it was in early January. Um, and I really love lemongrass. And then there's some celery that I also have on here to start on March 1st. But for flowers, uh, I'm going to be starting some opal basil. Uh, ornamental mint, which I grew a couple years ago, China Aster, my coleuses, carnations, black-eyed Susans that I started last year, uh, including those Sahara, really beautiful varieties, which apparently can be perennials in our zone. So I'm going to grow a lot of those, and I might stick, th stick them into the cottage garden area. I left some in the ground that I grew last year, so we'll see if they come back or not. Uh, and a lot of my Celosia and amaranth will be started then as well. Diane asked if I keep my blueberries covered when they're beginning to fruit. And so I think I've talked about this in a video before. I am not the type of gardener who's going to fuss with a plant. And so no, I don't. <laughs> I just want to put something out there, and if it doesn't do a good job, I will replace it with something else. I don't want something that I have to spend a lot of time on and fuss with. That's not the, really the type of gardener I am. There are some things that I will treat that way. Uh, fruiting things like that are something that I just kind of let, if they do their job and I get berries off of them, good. If I don't, then I don't. But I typically am too early or too busy in the early spring getting stuff in the ground, getting stuff cleaned up. To really pay attention to stuff that might like that may need to be done like that that's probably one reason i haven't had great success with my fruit trees also because of our crazy weather and w really late frost um, so that's just something i don't deal with so roxana asked what i use to fertilize my seedlings for um for annual flowers i use a just dissolvable fertilizer that's non-organic uh, for my seedlings let me go grab the bottle right quick so for my vegetables and everything else I use a fish and seaweed fertilizer I don't use a ton of it because if you've used organic fertilizers before they stink really, really bad. And so just a little bit. You don't need a whole lot for seed starting anyway. So Neptune's Harvest, uh, this is a lot. And it's I only, I only use it for seed starting. And so it would last you a really, really long time. Thank you, Sarah. I've tried. I took a break there in December. Um, it's really difficult in Ohio to do any content in the winter just because our weather is so bad and I don't like filming a whole lot uh, downstairs. So that's one reason I put this like studio in place. And so I picked up these cur curtains from Ikea a few weeks ago. I brought down an old couch that was in our sunroom that I don't hardly use. I actually have some art that I'm going to try and hang with fishing line in the wall here uh, and see how that looks. But I tried to spruce up this place so I could do some videos in winter and some content um, when it's not so pretty outside. Does anyone have any questions? We're reaching 7.52, and so we'll cut it off here soon if everybody's 
done or if we have any more questions, I'll give it a little bit. Yeah, so Roxana has a really nice whole seed starting room in her house, it looks like. So I don't have a place to do that, and I also don't have a place that doesn't have carpet. Uh, and it would be a disaster <laughs> for me to start seeds anywhere in the house um, other than the basement. So Becky asked what part of Ohio I'm in. Uh, so you're in Cincinnati. I am in Franklin between Dayton and Cincinnati. So not too far from here. It's great. There's lots of good garden centers both north and south of us, so it's a great location to be for a gardener. So the only seedlings I have, Roxana, are my geraniums, and I'll go grab them right quick and show them to you. So these are the geraniums I started in January. So. As I mentioned, geraniums take a really long time. I had, because these seeds were not, they were from last year, I had, it took them longer to germinate, some of them, and so typically I have full germination in two or three days, and some of these took a week to germinate, and you could tell which ones are smaller that took the longest. And I had two seeds that didn't germinate, and I put another seed in this one, and it's germinated, and then the second seed that I put in here didn't germinate. So I'll have... Roughly 31, I think, geraniums, or somewhere around in there. My math's not mathing. 8 times 4, yeah, 31. Yeah, so this is what they look. Let's see if we can get them close up here. And then my camera will focus. But then some of them are super tiny, like this is one that germinated really late. And so there's not actually very much going on here. But they already look like geraniums. So they'll just get bigger from here. And then I may pot these up again like I did this past year. Uh, I don't think I would need to. But the roots on these are pretty vigorous. And so in just a few weeks they will start coming out of the bottom of the trays um, already. Which is great. That allows them to get water easily bottom water them. Which I really like. All right, so Amy asks what seeds I'm excited about growing this year. Uh, I think I'm really excited about some of the amaranths I picked out. So this is my problem, and it's, it's, a, it's a flaw, I guess. I start a lot of stuff from seeds, a lot of flower annuals, and then I get so excited about the stuff at the garden center that I buy a bunch of stuff at the garden center, and then I end up big not knowing where to plant all the stuff I grew from seed so I've not grown a ton of stuff from seed as far as annuals the past few years but this year I'm really amping up my game because if you've been watching my channel you know I planted a ton of shrubs last year I removed some perennials from my garden and a lot of those shrubs are going to take several years to be of any significant size and so I'm trying to gonna try and upgrade my annual game this year to get some more color in the garden and so I am going to be growing some more stuff from seed, but I have a lot of annuals. And that's one reason I bought more seed trays. I may end up having to buy more bootstrap farmer supplies. Um, but this is all of my annuals that I'm going to be starting from seed. And there are a lot of them here. So there's a lot of calendulas, which I really like. But this is all annual seeds that I'm going to be starting this might be a little much, um, but with the cottage garden that I'll be starting next year, all of that stuff will be really small. I can tuck some stuff over there on the sides as well. So Justin or Justine uh, asked how long the geraniums take to germinate. So if you have fresh seeds like I did last year, Two to three days has been pretty typical for me, even in the basement, but I do put them on a heat mat. Heat mat. Um, some of these germinated in two or three days. Some of them took seven days, some a little longer. Um, but if you have fresh seeds, two to three days is probably what you should be looking for. So Vicki started some onions today. I do not grow onions in my garden um, from seed, 
primarily because I don't have the space to put onions in a vegetable garden. I do have my walking onions, which I put in a video last year, which are an Egyptian onion that is perennial, and it just stays in there. And I mainly use those for green onions, but I could pull the bulbs and cut those up and use them for an onion as well. Roxana had some amazing amaranth last year. All right, everybody. I think we're going to wrap it up here. If you have any last questions, I'll give you a couple minutes to get them in. Then we'll call it a night. Work day is tomorrow. If you have any seed starting questions, always ask them in the comments of my videos. I'm happy. I, I pr get pretty interactive in there and answer questions as I see them. Um, after the video has been out a few days, I tend to stop answering those questions as much just because it can become a lot. And so I'll only answer questions really on the new videos. But that's typically um, how I interact in my videos. So Roxana asked if I have a green stalk. I do have a green stalk. I planted it up last year with strawberries and um, marigolds and Swiss chard. And that's one of the things I mentioned. I didn't have great success with it because it tended to dry out really bad on our patio. I call our patio a pizza oven because it's brick. Uh, and it gets super hot, and so we're going to try and remedy some of that this year. And I'm going to, I may move the green stalk somewhere else where it can get a little more shade uh, and not dry out as easily, but that's going to be a project for this year. Yeah, so someone talked about the mosquito bits. I've been, I searched years ago for a good option to control fungus gnats. I tried cinnamon, I tried, um, nematodes that you can order online which are kind of expensive we had a really bad house plant infestation at one point uh, and they were really really difficult to get under control and i found them that the mosquito bits work really well to kill the larva initially in your potting mix and then we haven't had a whole lot of issues since so i will probably have a little issue here and there in the spring but this stuff you can also soak it and knock them out pretty easily as well all right everyone Thank you guys for joining me, and remember, in a world full of hate, be a light. Take care, everyone.